Former Genesis guitarist Anthony Phillips talks about the re-release of their first album from 1969, From Genesis to Revelation. Coming up, I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. This is our second interview with Anthony Phillips. This time he came on camera, which was really nice. Strings of Light is his brand new album on our sister station. We talk about, and we have an exclusive interview again with Anthony, where he talks about most of the tracks off the album. We play little clips from the album. There'll be links in the description of this video. But hopefully this year we'll get a re-release, maybe a lot of extras included in that, of the 1969 Genesis debut album from Genesis to Revelation. Back then, the band consisted of vocalist Peter Gabriel, Tony Banks on keys, Mike Rutherford on guitars and bass, John Silver on drums, Chris Stewart on drums on Silent Sun, and our special guest, Anthony Phillips on guitar. You know there's always this sense of mystery around everyone in that band that you were in. That Genesis band. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you approached by Genesis fans that that, uh, that that still ask you about a reunion? Do you still get stuff like that? Not really, no. I mean, I think I got. I think it's, it's so long ago that I was in the group. I think probably Steve and the others later edition do. But people, no, I don't. I think people knew I left, and for reasons, obviously, the reason I left early. So I no, I think that doesn't really exist with me. The only thing is that from Genesis to Revelation is about to be re-released, mm -hmm. fun enough by my record company, Cherry Red. And so there has been some kind of talk or rumours about us doing something together as a, but I really can't sit handy because everyone's off doing their own thing. And I don't think, you know, I, I, I really can't see it happening, but. The, from Genesis to Revelation, when's that gonna be re-released? I don't know. There's, I mean, they've got the rights, but um, it's really nothing definite at the moment. They're just trawling through all the possible extra material, I think. And there's no, it would, it's a shame in a way, because it should really have come out this year, which would have been 50 years since it's, um, but, um, It'll, I mean, I imagine it'll be over the next year or two. Yes, it, it's funny you say that about the band. Um, what's interesting is so many other of these bands, of course, have had offshoots and splits, you know, and different versions of the band going out with a name and all the rest of it. And great though some of them are, it must get mind boggling for the fans. Genesis has never been, you know, two Genesis out there. You know, I mean, you've even got the you've got the Beach Boys phenomenon where you've got Brian Wilson out there doing stuff, and then you've got Mike loves to, you know out there with the Beach Boys. And I'm thinking to myself, how can this be happening? This doesn't seem right. Um, and then all the different versions of Yes, and you end up with groups where only one person from the original group is actually still in it, and they're still using the name. I I find that. I find that quite tricky myself. I, I sort of feel they should call it so and so's. You know, I'm not going to give any names here, but I think some of them are obvious because if you've been a fan of that group, to, you know, more often than not, all the constituent elements were the reason why you like them. There may have been the old weak link or somebody who's been replaced, but when one dominant person or one survivor just keeps it and doesn't put his name in front of it, well, to me, it's not the same group. No. And I ask, every time I talk to someone, I don't preface the question by saying I have to ask it. Sometimes I do if the person's a little grumpy. How do you, because if I don't, the fans will kick my butt. They'll say, you should, that's course, a pink elephant question. You should have asked it, right? Yeah, I think people are going to get very defensive about that. But I think it's a good thing that Genesis didn't get into that awful fragmented thing. We've got a couple of guys doing, you know, calling it Genesis, another couple of guys. I think it's been, there's been, you know, there's been dignity. And um, I think the other thing is that, that Genesis have probably, all that, you know, there were disagreements. I think there's been a, a degree of dignity with which people have kind of, you know, departed and they can't, you know, there's been no sort of publicized um terrible fallings out or any of that kind of stuff and I think that's probably good for the image of the group um, I, I, can't, I personally can't see Peter ever really wanted to go back I mean I think there was talk wasn't there of some kind of reunion but yeah. I, think it's just, I think people have moved on that's the thing you know they're doing their own thing but don't Maybe you think there's a sense of the fact that like for instance you've got a few years on me but I'm going to be 60 in February for instance yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm looking at a lot of my rock stars dying, and people say, "Are you doing all these interviews because they're all dying?" I said, "No, I'm doing my interviews because I've been an underachiever <laughs> in radio for 35 years, and I'm just yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. mark, make my mark." I said, as a side note, I don't think of that because I don't think of asking a question of going, 
he might be dead now. Like Eddie Money, I talked to him nine months before he died, and I, I wasn't <laughs> thinking that. I wasn't. Uh, it, it's fairly more. It's a fairly morbid question, isn't it? I suppose the trouble is that you know if you if you look, you open the, the Times newspaper, for instance, you go to the obituaries and you see. Uh, you know, naval commander or pilot or something, you can be fairly sure he was sort of 85, 90. If you see a musician, you tend to think, right, as he made 70. And, and sadly, it is true. I think, um, obviously, the more sensible ones are lasting. I, 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 I mean, probably apart from the poor people that couldn't help it with, with cancer. But, you know, it was a business. It was a business that was well known for excess. And people overdid things. And... Um, you know, maybe that was part of what they needed. You know, some of the most interesting people in life are the quick burn, quick yeah. burn people. If you think of some of the great comedians, some of the great actors, I mean, people like Burton, very few, very few of these guys made it much past 60 if they made 60, yeah. let alone 70. So um, I don't think it's morbid. I'm sorry, I think the question is morbid, but you're not interviewing them because you think they might peg it tomorrow. You're hoping they're going to keep going forever. Part two of our conversation with the great Anthony Phillips coming up next week. And remember, we have a whole feature on Strings of Light, his new album on our sister channel, Rock History Book, where we play some of the new album and he talks about selected tracks. Actually, more than half of the album is a double CD set. Links will be in the description of this video. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. I'm John Bogdan. This is Rock History Music.